Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go over section 7.8 in improper integrals. So, um, there are multiple cases of improper integrals. The first is uh, what happens when we have infinite intervals. We can also check when we have discontinuities on the integrand. And we also check a uh, comparison between improper integrals. But before getting to what a comparison can be, Let's check first the first two cases. On the first, infinite intervals, what happens is that we have uh, an infinite region, but that infinite region is not going to have an infinite area. So to exemplify that, imagine that you have the region that lies under the curve, one over x squared above the x-axis and the line x equals one. So that is represented by this here. And so you might initially consider that since that area seems to extend infinitely, then the value of the area is going to be infinite. But that's not the case. Notice that if we just bound the area for a little bit, if we just put a T here to bound a big piece of that area, then we can do the calculation of the integral. And that's going to be, or, or the area representing uh, this piece, which is given by the integral. And that will be... Um, the integral from 1 to t of 1 over x squared dx. And when we do that, we're going to get that this is 1 minus 1 over t. So one of the things that you can uh, realize from this is that the maximum of the area is going to be 1. And if we move t more and more to the right side, or we, get, we make t go to infinity, um, then that's where we're going to realize that that area is maximum 1. You can also see that here from these pictures. Uh, if we make t equals 2, then the area is 1 half. If we make t equals 3, then the area is going to be 2 over 3. If we make the, air, the t equals 5, then the area is going to be 4 over 5. And finally, when we let t goes to infinity, then we get that it's going to be 1. And hence, we can consider that the, the, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx can be seen as the limit when t goes to infinity of 1 to t integral of uh, 1 over x squared dx. And that's going to be 1. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to use that same principle to calculate infinite areas. And so by definition, if we have that the, an integral from a to t of a function f of x dx is cis for any number t bigger than a certain a, then uh, we can say, oh, okay, so the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx is the limit when t goes to infinity of the integral of a to t of f of x dx. And provided that the limit is cis, then uh, we can say um, that that integral is going to assist and it's called convergent. We have a second version of this, and is if instead the problem is not on the right side, but on the left side, then we can take the limit when t goes to minus infinity. So in that scenario, if we have that the integral from a certain t to a number b of f of x dx is cis for every number t that is less than b, then the integral from minus infinity to v of f of x dx is going to be the limit when t goes to minus infinity of the integral t to v of f of x dx. And then again, provided that that limit is cis, and is a finite number, of course, then both of these integrals are going to call convergent. If the limit does not exist, then we're going to call them divergent. So now, um, if both of those integrals exist by chance, then we can even talk about exploring a third version where we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function f of x dx. And we essentially, what we do is we split this out uh, by leaving uh, a go to minus infinity here, and we can split it in zero. And so we get the limit when it goes to minus infinity of a to zero of f of x dx. And then we take the plus the limit when b goes to infinity of the integral from zero to b of f of x dx. And so because both of these uh, integrals are going to assist, then this general integral 
uh, from minus infinity to infinity is going to assess. But now let's see some examples of this into play so we can actually see how you can uh, do this in practice. So first let's consider the integral of um, 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. So initially I'm not going for anything complicated. Um, notice that I'm just going to state that this is the limit when b goes to infinity of 1 to b, 1 over x dx. And now I just focus on what this integral is. So this is limit when b goes to infinity. And then uh, this integral is going to be uh, the integral of 1 over x, which is log of absolute value of x between 1 and b. Okay? And so that is the limit when b goes to infinity of log of b, absolute value of b, minus log of absolute value of 1. Notice that this is zero, so this essentially becomes the limit when b goes to infinity of the log of absolute value of b. Notice that in this case, uh, when b goes to infinity, the log of b goes to infinity. So this limit is going to be infinity. So the meaning of that is that the integral of 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx is actually infinity. This is what we call a divergent case because we don't have that the limit is finite, so we can call that this is a divergent case, okay? Now let's go with another one. Uh, let's consider the integral from minus infinity to minus one of uh, one over x squared dx. And notice that here I'm changing uh, the positioning of the infinity. Now this is limit when a goes to minus infinity of the integral of a to minus one 1 over x squared dx. And then again, I'm focusing on uh, now what the integral is. Uh, notice that this is uh, equivalent to the integral to x to the minus 2. So it's a power. And then this is going to be limit when a goes to minus infinity. And this is x to the minus 1 over minus 1 between a and minus 1. Okay. And so that means limit when x goes to minus infinity. And then I plug a minus 1. So this is minus 1 to the minus 1 over minus 1. And then minus um, a to the minus 1 over minus 1. So now I can simplify a bit uh, this. I'll rearrange this a little bit. Uh, notice that minus 1 to the power of minus 1 is just 1 over minus 1. And with another minus 1, this is just going to become a 1. This whole thing becomes a 1. This minus with this minus is a plus. So this becomes a plus. And a, a to the minus 1 is just 1 over 8. And so now notice that this is limit when x goes to minus infinity of this. And in this case, when it goes to minus infinity, 1 over a is going to become 0. So this overall limit is going to be 1. So this case is a convergent case. We, we say that the uh, integral from minus infinity to minus 1 of 1 over x squared dx is going to be 1. And this is convergent. Uh, so now let's go to another uh, different exercise here. Uh, a little bit more of complexity. We can go with uh, the third point is the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And um, we kind of know what this is because this is a basic antiderivative. Um, but before we do anything special, we just got to set up the integral as usual. So this is limit when from the integral of 1 to b, or 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And then after that, then I can say, oh, okay, so this is 
the derivative of arctangent of x. So if I'm doing the integral, this is just arctangent of x between 1 and b. And then this is going to be a limit when b goes to infinity of arctangent of b minus arctangent of 1. Okay? And so, um, first and anything, if b is going to infinity, notice that arctangent, when we're approaching to infinity, this is approaching by half. When we approach infinity, if you, if you check the, the arctangent function, or if you check the tangent function and see what happens when uh, we're going closer to pi over 2, then you can see that the tangent when it's going to pi over 2 goes to infinity. So in the way back, with that, our tangent, if we're coming from infinity, we reach to pi half. Now our tangent of 1 is going to be pi over 4, since uh, we're essentially asking, well, where, where the tangent was 1, and the tangent was 1 where um, we have pi over 4. So this is going to be pi half minus pi over 4, which is pi over 4. Hence, this is a convergent integral. And then we can, we can say that this whole thing is equals to pi over 4. Okay? Last, uh, we have a very simple example. We have the integral from 1 to infinity of e to minus x dx. Um, and this is just using a different function from what we had before. Uh, notice that uh, we first got to state the limit. This is key. First, you got to state the limit regardless of uh, if you know the integral or not. Um, that way you avoid any uh, confusions or any issues. Uh, and this is going to be e to the minus x between 1 and b. Um, and you get a minus um, extra when you're integrating. And so this is limit when b goes to infinity of minus e to the minus b, then plus e to the minus 1. Now, uh, when b is going to infinity, then this piece is going to go to 0. Remember, because this is essentially minus 1 over e to the v. This is what e to the minus b is. So this goes to 0. And uh, because we have plus e to the minus 1, then this is e to the minus 1 at the end. And we can conclude that this is a convergent integral. That has a result of e to the minus 1. Okay, so this is the conclusion of the examples. In part 2, I'm going to see um, the second case of the um, discontinuous integrants.